Okay, as many of you already know that watch my channel, you know that I've been a police officer now for almost 20 years. Plus, I have also been unfortunately involved in a self-defense shooting myself. So, unfortunately, I do have experience in this topic. And then also, if you regularly watch my channel, then you know that I do not regularly weigh in on controversial police action shootings while they're still all over the news and everybody's still in an uproar about them. So in today's video, you are going to learn why it's important that I do not weigh in on these police action shootings immediately after they happen and why it's probably would be important for you to also not weigh in on them. And also really quick, while I am filming this video right now in early October of 2020, there is actually no major police action shooting that's all over the news at this moment in time. But I actually felt comfortable pre-filming this video because I see time after time where we as a society keep repeating history where a controversial police action shooting happens, it gets plastered all over the news and people get all up in arms about it, making accusations and, and making declarations. And usually after time passes and more information comes out, they get proven wrong. So the fact that I am pre-filming this video before the next controversial police action shooting or controversial police use of force incident happens, but because I am pre-filming this video, is why you are going to hear me refer to this incident that will happen sometime in the future as a police use of force incident because when I'm filming this I don't know if it's going to be a controversial police action shooting or something to do with the neck or whatever. But again I am able to pre-film this video before the next incident happens because we see this time after time a controversial police action shooting happens the news media plasters all over the news a shortened video clip of what occurred and then everybody on social media gets all up in an uproar then there's riots and then as time passes and more information comes out then it's found out that most of the time that the police officers actually did act within the law and were both legally and morally justified in their police action shooting. And how about this? It actually gets called legally and morally justified by people that actually understand critical and deadly use of force incidents and how they actually go down. So again, the reason why I am pre-filming this video is because sooner or later, a controversial police use of force incident will happen and everybody will get in a big uproar. People will be making statements of what they believe really happened and then when this incident does actually happen then i can actually release this video now the first reason i am not going to speculate on this controversial police use of force is because i wasn't there i didn't witness it and i didn't perceive what that officer perceived at that moment in time when he used that force. And again, right now we only have a small amount of information on this controversial police use of force. Right now, probably all we have is just a little bit of information that the media is pushing out to everybody. And the media has a tendency to kind of lie by omission, push half truths, and if there is video to this, they're probably only releasing a small snippet of the video that doesn't tell the full story. So with that, with us only having what would be two sentences out of a whole book, with us only having so limited amount of information, it would be foolish for me to automatically jump to try to say that this was a justified police use of force, and it would also be foolish of me to automatically state that it was a bad use of force. I mean, come on, if you've got video of a cop walking up to a car, pulling a little old lady on her way out, on her way to church out of the car and shooting her, okay, that's a different story. But in the vast majority of these controversial police action shootings, that is not what's occurring. There's usually violence, some kind of, some kind of a violent encounter leading up to this controversial use of force. Now the one thing that's really important to remember about these controversial police use of force is that it just takes time for that information to get released from the 
investigators to the media that the media can put out to us. And the reason why that just takes time is, is that after one of these major incidents happen, there's a lot of people that's got to be investigated. There's got to be video surveillance, body cams, and everything else that has to be compiled and checked against each other. Plus, there's going to be witnesses to these incidents. And what we don't want is we don't want those witness statements to get thrown out in court because their, their testimony or their independent recollection gets tainted by what they hear on the news. So if, they, if the investigators put too much information out there too quick, and then these potential witnesses hear this, and it actually changes their testimony from what they actually remember, they're just spouting off what they seen or heard in the news instead of what they remembered, then it can get their testimony thrown out in court. And if a cop actually did something wrong, if a cop actually did a bad police action shooting, we don't want witnesses against him getting thrown out in court. If a cop does something bad, if he commits murder like that, then he needs to be held responsible. Now, a lot of people would think that because I am a police officer that when one of these controversial police action shootings or use of force incidents happen, that I would automatically jump on the police side and automatically say it was a good police use of police force, but I can't do that because of, of a couple different reasons. The first thing is, as police officers, as police, we are a arm of the government, so we have to be kept in check. We just don't want to automatically put the check mark saying everything that we do is good. We have to be kept in check so that we don't trample, so that the government doesn't trample on the people. The second reason why I automatically will not jump to the defense of a police use of force until I have more information is because of when agencies in cities lower their hiring standards in order to attract more minority police officers. Now, before you go crazy on the keyboard calling me a racist, I really support the hiring of minority police officers. Our police departments should be diverse. If a area is 50% black or 50% Hispanic, then its police force should also be 50% black or 50% Hispanic. A police department should always reflect the area that it patrols. But while I strongly support the hiring of minorities so that the police departments are diversified to reflect the areas that they patrol, what I don't support is the lowering of the hiring standards. The reality is, is that lowered hiring standards results in substandard cops. And then substandard cops are not police officers that can make reasonable and good decisions in fast situations that are dangerous. And cops that can't make good decisions in dangerous situations can equal bad police action shootings or bad police use of force. Now, just to clarify, I am not saying that because of today's political climate where we have diversified hiring, I am not saying that it's automatically a bad use of force. I'm just stating that in today's climate, because we have lowered standards, hiring standards for police officers, and especially the uh, major, more liberal cities, that there is too high of a likelihood that it could be a bad police use of force. So my stance is that when a controversial police use of force occurs and the media is shoving it out to get everybody in an uproar, that what we should do is actually wait until more information comes out before we start declaring that it's a good use of force or bad use of force and let this actually get settled in a court of law instead of a court of public opinion. Because if we rush too soon to judgment with what little information that we have at this time, we are just not using our critical thinking skills and we are making fools of ourselves. So why don't you weigh in down below? Do you think I am correct on this topic? Do you think that the American people rush too quick to judgment when they have so little information? And do you also think that the media is really blowing these, these things out of proportion in order to divide us or to get more clicks on their news stories? And to learn why the police will many times shoot a suspect 10 to 12 times when they get involved in a police action shooting. And
and to learn why you will probably shoot a suspect that many times yourself should you get involved in a shooting, then click on the video that should be appearing on the screen just about now to learn that powerful information. Anyways, folks, that's enough internet for today. It is time to go train. And folks, if you made it this far, hey, thank you very much for watching. And I pray that you have a good night. <music>